Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Electricity security, logistics and localization emerged as key themes for those seeking to accelerate the implementation of the Steel Master Plan. Terence Screamer joins me to talk about these issues. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Nearly a year on, is the Steel Master Plan delivering? I think it's a mixed bag. Um, I think on the whole there's a lot of frustration at the slow pace of delivery. There have been some progress around getting some protection for downstream industries and there's been some progress on setting up a steel fund. There's a levy that's been put on every ton of steel sold and uh, that is using, being used to support um, programs to sort of combat illicit trades. So I think there has been some progress but there's a deep frustration uh, that there's just insufficient demand in the system and there's very few levers that the industry itself can really pull to make sure that that demand comes back. We know that the infrastructure program has been placed at the centre of the eco economic reconstruction and recovery program. So there's potential for the steel industry and other industries construction to benefit from a large scale rollout, but we're just not seeing it. And I think the, the key state owned companies that lead infrastructure are in dire straits financially and are sort of getting their houses back in order. So Eskom spend is way down. Transnet spend is way down. So there, there isn't this base load demand coming through. And then when there is <laughs> a big um, prospect of demand through, for instance, Sanral, we see adjudicated tenders of more than 17 billion rand taken off the table. So it's a really a struggle for companies that supply into the infrastructure market, including the steel companies, without the security of demand or, or even visibility of stable demand. Localization is still seen as an important instrument for boosting the band. Yes, this is a controversial point we know because uh, there's many, there's a growing sort of feeling that localization might be getting in the way of infrastructure delivery. Uh, so there's a feeling that we need to accelerate the pace and localization is a nice to have, but actually what is urgent is to get the power lines in, the railway lines in, to get power stations built, especially the renewables plants. And we know that there's been this whole conundrum around the local content, both in the risk mitigation program of the RPP office, as well as the new renewables round, where they, there's a stipulation using BTI's designation of sectors that panels, for instance, be sourced locally. Now, we know that that's come after a decimation of the industry, and that's really because of bad policy implementation or a failure to implement policy over a seven, eight year period where we just had no procurement. So you've decimated the supply industry and then you suddenly want them to go from zero to hero. So there's a concern that it's holding up some of the non-gas projects in the risk mitigation uh, program and it could hold up some of the projects in the bid window five. We're going to have to see there's new deadlines end of the month for the risk mitigation program and there's a new deadline of July and September, staggered deadlines for bid window five. But that, that's one of the areas where local content has come to the fore as a potential constraint to actually delivering much needed, very urgent infrastructure. And it seems that uh, a desktop study was done to see what capacity was available and the DTRC signed off on that desktop study without actually going to see those factories and what state they were in. There's no doubt though that it would be crazy to pursue a large-scale renewables rollout over multi-decades without a plan to localize as much content of that as possible. But it's an issue of sequencing. And the issue of localization did come up quite strongly at the Steel Master Plan Conference this week, organized by CIFSA. These are strong advocates of local content. These are, would be strong beneficiaries of a, uh, local content. And across the board, business, labor, and government within the sector want a local content. They are concerned about the Constitutional Court, that uh, case around the triple PFA that threw out that, those regulations that allowed for local content. Although it was attacked on the empowerment uh, leg, it's actually local content has actually become the casualty. And we've seen all these exemptions coming out from the National Treasury to allow Eskom and Transnet to procure, given this vacuum that's been left uh, post that Constitutional Court case. But there's a view very strongly put by Labour that local content should be accelerated, raised. And there was a, a very interesting analysis provided by Bernie Fanaroff 
of this debate and say, saying that there's this false dichotomy between infrastructure delivery and uh, local content. Yes, there will be some aspects that we can't deliver, uh, but he says he believes that if the industry is given better visibility and there's greater transparency of what is to be built and there's engagements up front, we'll have some understanding of what industry, domestic industry, can supply competitively immediately. And his view is that there's actually, it's a very complex ecosystem and there's a, actually a quite a lot of capacity to deliver. And his touch point is really that he was the head of the SKA project office that built the Meerkat. And the Meerkat was built using South African design, South African engineers, and built in South African factories. So he's saying it is possible if you give the industry some visibility, you give them early uh, sight of what you're planning to do, you can get more local content. And he's saying, that let's not have this uh, sort of mantra that lower local content is just going to raise costs, is just going to delay uh, the system, and is just about price gouging. He says there is a risk of that. You know, the industry can't come and just see this as a big gift uh, where they can just charge whatever they like, and there is a risk. You know, to have a sort of a sweeping statement that localization just can't work, he feels is factually incorrect, and he uses the Meerkat example to justify his statement. But electricity supply also remains a worry, as is Transnet's performance. Yeah, um, both unions, Solidarity and NUMSA were at the conference and made it clear that Transnet's performance is a major problem. Uh, Solidarity raised that very firmly. Um, we know what's happening uh, with cable theft. We know that the floods have, have amplified the whole problem around Transnet's operational uh, stability. And we also know that there's this problem around uh, the cancellation or the halting of procurement around the 1064 locomotives. And now it seems China South Rail won't even supply the spare parts needed to keep those electric ro locomotives going. So big problems around Transnet. And they say without an efficient transnet, there can't be an efficient steel industry. They, they, it's a symbiotic relationship, and they need that to, to come back. The, the NUMSA was more strident. They say the, the triple scourge is now Eskom, Transnet, and AMSA, or Oslomital. They're saying that's our triple scourge. We know about poverty. We know about inequality. Uh, we know uh, about unemployment. But this is uh, the, the real scourge of the industry. And they're saying on a number of levels. One, they say they're not doing enough on the local content, although there seems to be a lot of discussions around the transmission infrastructure and how that can be localised more assertively. We know what's happening in the renewable space. Transnet's also making overtures around local rail, uh, local infrastructure, lo rolling stock aspects that the industry can supply into. But this is seen as a major, major problem. So Solidarity raised the issue around Transnet. Everyone else, including business and CIFSA, raised the issue about electricity supply. Again, we talked about the symbiotic relationship for competitive supply, needing Transnet rail logistics to work. But without electricity, they can't even produce their products. And manufacturing depends 100% on electricity. It's a, it's a very electricity intensive game. You need stable supply and you need better pricing uh, tariffs. So basically the message from CIFSA's president was that if we don't get this right and if we don't stabilize electricity supply and we don't stabilize the rising in, in tariffs, the whole steel master plan becomes a pipe dream. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.